Fishing the Wild West TV with Wes David is brought to you by Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest, Adventure Destination International. Book your trip of a lifetime with Adventure Destination International in Thompson's Resort, along with Cam Clark Ford, the official vehicle of Fishing the Wild West TV. Fishing the Wild West. Getting a little western on the deck. This episode has been brought to you by Popular Demand. We've received tons of emails, messages. We're going to fish stocked trout ponds. Now there's hundreds, maybe thousands of stocked trout ponds throughout North America. We're going to show four or five simple techniques to fish your local stocked trout pond. These techniques would be anything from beginner anglers all the way up to seasoned veterans to enjoy a great day on the shoreline or out on the water in your local stock trout pond. That's a nice rainbow trout to start it off. Not all stock trout ponds have a dock, but it's sure comfortable when they do. He is strong. This water's cold. It's spring of the year. Water's still quite cold. And we got him in the net. Show him to the camera. Beautiful rainbow trout. So we just got the hook out of him. Simple simple bobber fishing. We're going to show you what we are doing. Beautiful rainbow trout out of a stock trout pond. You think these things don't make it through the winter? Here's proof that they do. And away he goes to the bottom. So all I had here, we're going to show you a couple different ways of fishing stock trout ponds to make it easier on yourself and on the kids. And this is just a simple bobber. Uh, guessed at about 12, 15 feet out to where we're casting. So I set up my stopper at, at about 10 feet. Simple lightweight bobber. I got a 16 ounce, 16th ounce Tic Tac jig here from Big Sky Jigs. And I'm just tipping that with the power bait, which we showed you. And just letting the kind of the current and the wind push that bobber wherever it, wherever it wants to go and the fish are taking it. That's our first one. We just had it out about 15 minutes and that was a beauty to start the show. <laughs> that one took a little bit, about 15, 20 minutes since our last one, but that's fishing. I got my net way over there. I gotta go. Maybe I'll have to land him by hand. I like to have the security of my ego net. I left it too far down the bank. Lots of times when I'm fishing, I'll work my way down the bank and keep trying other areas. And I just came to a new spot and left my net behind. Perfect, you come right out. Excellent. I don't got to handle him. He took that little little tick-tock or tic-tac jig again right underneath my bobber. And get back out there. He wasn't that far out, like just inside these ripples, kind of just at the edge of them. Alright. We may be back on the spot. We just, I just lost one right at the shore here. Casted it out and this guy come in, but I did have time to go get my eagle net. So hopefully we can show this one to you. And he's a little bit better. Hope I don't lose him. I want to show him to you. While I'm fighting him, well, again, we're not casting way out. It's right just at the edge of these wind ripples. And he's 
Whoa! That wasn't my greatest netting job, but we got him. And that is a beautiful stocked rainbow trout. That is a beauty. You don't think they grow big, big in the stocked ponds? Have a look at that. He's probably, I'm just guessing, four years old. We'll get him back in the water. This segment has been brought to you by Steel Shad Lures. Any fish, any depth, any season. And Power Pole. Total boat control. Closed captioning is brought to you by Buzz Bomb Tackle. Iconic sonic fishing lures made in North America for over 50 years. Just putting on the power bait. Even though power bait is has a little scent, I guess, I'm not sure. But I never fish without liquid mayhem. I know I've said it lots in the segment. But it makes a big difference. If you want to catch more fish, liquid mayhem. So I just put it on there, smeared it in a little. And I just want to show you, you see how big the pond is. I just want to show you how far out that we're casting. It's just a simple lob cast and 20, 30 feet out. That's it. And they're just cruising these shorelines. They'll go around this pond different times of the day. They might be here, they might be over there. But in a stock trout pond, they're everywhere all the time. But just like structure on a lake or a reservoir, this goes out and drops down into the deeper part of the pond. And we're fishing right on that edge. Got our bobbers about six feet underneath, or our, our jig six feet underneath our bobbers, or you can use a simple little J hook, as long as it's weighted to drop down and stand your bobber up straight. That's key. Right on the edge, wait till your bobber goes under, set the hook. <laughs> right on the shallows. Again, I, I, I know I've said it, you don't have to cast way out. We're 20 feet. 20 feet from the shoreline, and we're, this is a big fish, I believe. I always have my net too far away. Yeah, he's not done either. This is a really good rainbow trout. Beautiful colors, polarized glasses. You can see them in the water really well. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just got the hook out of them. Get that out of the way. Make sure he's okay. Keep him in my net. Oh. Holding on with the rubber from the Ego net helps you. you not have to squeeze so tight, gives you a little grip. That is a beauty. And there he goes. Right down here, he's gonna go out, I'm guessing about 10, 15 feet, and then it drops off. And we're casting about 10, 15 feet. And that's where they're all cruising that line. So again, like I was talking when I was fighting them, you don't have to cast right to the middle of the pond. They're all cruising along here where there's freshwater shrimp. Some ponds have sticklebacks and different aquatic life. And then obviously in the summer months, they're feeding on the insects, which a lot of insect hatches are very close to the shoreline. So right out here is where your fish are. Oh! He come off. He kept my, no, my bait's gone. He got her all. Well, we'll just have to feed him a little more. And that's it. You just watched me uh, put this power bait on and just touch it up with that liquid mayhem. And I missed him. I didn't get a good hook set, so my fault. Everything else did its job except for me. That's fishing. 
This conservation talk is brought to you by Brian Muir with IA Securities, aligning your financial future so you can spend more time outdoors. So we're fishing the stock trout pond here today and luck would have it, Smoky Trout Farms is delivering fish. They've got 500 eight to 10 inch rainbow trouts that are going in. We're gonna show you how fast and efficient and stress-free it is to stock your trout pond or your conservation ponds. Smoky Trout Farms, they stock ACA ponds, Alberta Fish and Game Association ponds, as well as private ponds. And we're gonna to get to see how it's done here today. As you can see, it's quick, efficient and stress-free on the, on this case, the rainbow trout. This is just one project of where your conservation dollars go throughout whatever province or state you live in. Join your local hunting and fishing clubs and get involved with conservation. This segment has been brought to you by Hooked Magazine. Hooked on fishing in the great outdoors. And Lucky Bug Lures. Get hooked on Lucky Bug Lures. Welcome back to Fishing the Wild West TV. So we're back at a stock trout pond. This is the same pond we were at this spring. We're here today with Bailey, which you'll see she'll catch her very first fish ever out of a stock trout pond. And we got two young fellas, two brothers that are competing to catch more fish than the other. All right, first one on. Okay, hang on, just take your time. Reel, reel, there you go. Keep, move up here, don't walk away. Keep, okay, just take your time. Hang on up here. Let go of this hand for a sec. Just stop reeling. Okay, you got him? Yeah. Hang on with two hands. Let go here, let go here. There you go. Okay, don't reel anymore. Perfect. All right, open this up. Excellent. This is a, so important to take young kids fishing and to help them get a good start in the outdoors and practice catch and release. There he goes. Excellent. Good job, buddy. Next, we'll get you out and get you started again. All right. Action's fast and furious. She hasn't even got her backpack off yet. So this is, just take your time. This is the summer months when fish, uh, rainbow trout, they'll take actually moving baits a lot more. This one here, I believe, tied on a number six, Len Thompson. I don't know where I put my pliers. Give me a little slack, Bailey, please. This is Bailey, your first fish? Yeah, actually. Ever? Ever. Excellent. Well, and that is the number six, Len Thompson. Give me the pliers right there on the bench. Okay, this is Bailey's first fish ever. And again, they say 90% of new anglers catch their first fish at a stock trout pond. Are you hooked on fishing, Bailey? I am. Not all stock trout ponds have this beautiful dock, but there's some great shoreline fishing. Again, summer months, you can start using faster moving baits, such as you're using a number six Len Thompson. Um, we got steel shads on over there and they're more aggressive, more willing to bite. So let's get back at her. Keep reeling, keep reeling. There you go, you got him. Way to go. These kids are hammering them. Bring him over here. That's just a nice young fella too. He was caught or stocked this year, I bet you. Okay, just give a little slack, open your bail. Perfect. Caught another decent young. So we've caught one for sure. This one was stocked this year. Oh, and he caught it on a steel shed. Once they're caught with the steel shed, they're hooked. We'll get them out in a minute. Oh, we'll get your picture with the next one. <laughs> You'll catch more, I promise. They're slippery but you don't want to squeeze them too hard because you don't want to hurt them. If you squeeze, if you squeeze a trout too hard, it's like squeezing their lungs and, and their internal organs. So you got to be real careful. So it's better he swam away and we catch another one. Is 
Does he feel like a good one? I think I lost him. He might have. He really jumped. Wow, did he come out of the water? Well, that's rainbow trout fishing. <laughs> that was a big, that was a big fish would probably come that high out of the water. <laughs> I'm not sure he got the greatest hook set with the rod. <laughs> the old Zebco. <laughs> this gear talk is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. When you talk about Eagle fishing products, most people quickly think about the Ego S2 slider, the fishing nets. But Ego has a wide variety of nets for every angler's needs, sizes, everything you need from salmon nets all the way down to this S1 that I'm going to use later today for rainbow trout. But Ego fishing products has a lot more than just nets. Quality dry bags, which I've trusted our backup camera on rough waters on flying fishing trips inside this bag. Quality tackle bags, everything you need. Trays, a wide variety of storage, and every angler knows that you can't get enough pockets and storage for your gear. All the way down to the quality coolers in a wide variety of sizes. All these products can be purchased at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, or go to Eagle Fishing online and get everything you need for your next fishing trip. This segment has been brought to you by Lynn Thompson Lures, Canadian made for over 90 years, and Rock Guard, protect your investment. This segment is brought to you by Big Sky Flies and Jigs, tackle you can trust, and Tourism Saskatchewan. Start planning your visit today. There's one, just tied on a number six, Lynn Thompson, just in the, the solid silver. And because I'm wearing the polarized glasses, I've, I've had a couple followers. I could see them right, whoa. <laughs> I could see them right, come right up to the edge. And again, like I talked about in the show earlier, I've never caught a rainbow trout out in the middle of the lake. It's all been about 20 to 30 feet from the edge of the shore. Just gonna grab my ego net here. Hopefully I can get him in. It's a sharp drop off here. I don't want to bench. Oh, he come off. Perfect. Now I don't have to handle him and I can cast again. The key is to cast out and I'm not casting out to the center. I'm kind of casting so I can follow the shoreline. But when you cast, whether you're using a steel shad or number six Len Thompson, let it sink to the bottom before you start reeling it back. So then the entire time that you're reeling, it's climbing up, up the hill, just like climbing up the structure. And I'm reeling it just fast enough that I, it's creating that flash and vibration. So I cast it out. So like I say, I've cast it kind of along the shoreline. I'm letting it sink. And this is what's hard with kids is they cast it out and begin reeling right away. Let it get to the bottom and then just, just reel fast enough that you can feel the little vibration. I barely felt that one hit. He hit it a long ways out there. There's an island out there and I think he was off that shore. Oh, he come off. But that's what he's hitting. Usually when they jump, that's when you best chance to lose them is they come out of the water and they throw their head and they open up the hole in their lip. But I'm using a steel shad, just a little bait, casting it out there and they're taking it. There it is, quarter ounce steel shad and just swimming it. And like I said, whoa, throughout the whole show, none of them are cr any trout pond I've ever fished. They're not, oh, I thought he's gonna jump again. They're not way out in the middle. They're 30, 40 feet from the shoreline. That's a really decent rainbow trout in anybody's books. 
We'll get him out. We'll show him to you. Get him back in the water. I got pliers in my pocket here. There, and I don't even got to touch them. I'm just going to put them right back in the water. Away he goes. No worse for wear. Cast again. Got him? Yep. He's a little fella stock this year, I bet you a hundred bucks. Oh yeah, just a little. That's okay, that's perfect. This came out. Glenn Thompson came out. Let's show him to the camera. I'll hold him here just because he's so little. Sit, smile. He <laughs> got him on camera. Good job, buddy. That's your third or fourth one. There, away he goes. Excellent. Good job. So as you can see, fishing stock trout ponds is a lot of fun, especially when you involve the kids. The next time you get an opportunity, take a youngster fishing or a new angler fishing and enjoy a day along the shorelines of a stock trout pond. Hope you'll follow us on social media or pick up a copy of Hook Magazine and follow us on our next adventure. I'm your host, Wes David, Fishing the Wild West TV. Good job. Another one from this year. Okay, open your bail. Sometimes it feels like heaven. Fishing the Wild West. Living Find that hook. Perfect. They haven't been biting hard. Fish in the wild. Show it to the camera, we'll get them back in the water. In the to spend ten hours on this fishing boat. Good job, Bailey. No cell phone service and we'll get him back in. What matters most is that I'm all alone. Living a dream, fishing stream. And there he goes. Follow us on social media or at fishingthewildwesttv.com.